get it while it's hot. The dude mung is 3,000. What do you want from me? Fear. No monkey. What up? It's your boy Dumungus, and we're back with another episode today, man. I am so happy that it's the Dagum New Year. So happy Dagum New Year to everybody. And I'm just happy to be no back monkey. in front of the camera again. And we have to jump into this episode. There's a lot, it's so much we have to dive into, and there's a lot I like diving into while I'm riding on the bike, but some things are just they're they're too important and too detailed. I'm just like, we need to sit down and we need to talk about that. But before I get into that today, I want to give a shout out to my boy. Meals on two wheels. My boy has opened up a merch store. Think less, do more. I absolutely love what this stands for and the positivity that this brings to the motorcycle community. You guys are gonna see a totally different vibe from me this year. Like I am all about support and I'm gonna invest in supporting a lot of you guys. And we're gonna d jump deeper into that in a, a different episode, but I just, I know too many people doing too many positive things that I can't be supporting a little bit more than what I am. So this year is going to be all about support and daggum giving back. And the shirt, hopefully it's coming through in camera view. Think less, do more. Absolutely love what this stands for. So again, I will leave the information for this hoodie in the description. My boy Mills, he's a, he's a stand-up guy, just a cool guy down here in Atlanta. You know, you meet those people. There's some people you meet that you hold on to. My boy Mills, he's one of them people, man. Just just a cool dude, down to earth, chill vibe. Ain't no hating. Ain't no, like, there's competition. Hey, let's get better. But ain't no, like, funny competition where, like, I really don't want to see you win. It's nothing like that. He's always been a stand-up, straight-up guy. Always supported me in every endeavor that I do. And my man, when I tell you this hoodie, I can't even cap. I'm not even going to lie. And I know I got my own hoodies that I sell, too. But this is probably, like, the best quality hoodie I've ever had in my entire life. Like, this hoodie is thick. It's soft, it's plush, it's everything you need it to be. So, shout out to my boy. But we're about to get off of that because we got to jump into this episode. Bam. And whenever you see the phone come out, you know it's serious because I had to keep notes just to try to make sure I don't get off track too far. One thing I love about social media and the internet is that it's the internet. You guys probably can hear I'm a little, a little nasally. I'm still dealing with whatever this is. It's like I had a sinus infection and it's just kind of lingering. So I'm still dealing with that. So I'm glad I'm actually not around anyone at this moment. Uh, you might hear some coughing. You might hear some sneezing. Y'all, please just bear with me. I got my water and I got my Kleenex over there because I am pretty sure I'm going to have to blow my nose. And I'm actually, I'm with a cough drop in my mouth right now because throat is just dry as heck. So y'all, please bear with me. But we got to jump into this episode. You know what? Am I making excuses? Am I hating or am I talking about facts, right? That's what that's what we're going to get into today. I've been a part of the roll race scene for a few years now, and God has placed me in a position. I tell y'all this all the time. I literally know some of the fastest people in the nation, and I pick up things. And it's something that I think the community does not know about roll racing in particular that they just do not care about and most of it is the internet people that's in the game you guys know about it but the internet they don't care all they see is a win and a loss right before we get into that again this is no hate on nobody i'm going to use some examples of friends very close friends of mine that way i know i'm not offending nobody and you guys have seen some races if you watched the last episode best of 20 2023 you would have seen some of them run so i'll make sure i put that link up so you can go back and look at these runs and make your judgment call off of what I'm going to talk about. Am I, am I hating? Am I talking facts? Or am I making excuses? Let, let's see what's going on. We're going to dive into it. Let me go to my daggum notes. <coughs> I'm so glad you guys ain't got to be a part of that. That's, ugh, that's horrible, bro. So we only have seven topics to hit on, but they might mighty morph into something else. I'm really going to try to keep my, my I'm going to try my best to keep myself ranting. But there's just a few things we got to get into. So you guys that don't know me, I am Duke Mungus, and I've been on a journey to build the best all-around <coughs> all around leader bike. We'll jump into that episode later too. But we've been on the venture to build the best all-around leader bike. I really don't think you guys understand how impressive the bat in particular, Lee, has been. And also some of the other bikes that's in this community, like one of my guys, Reaper. I don't think you guys understand how successful and how fast his platform is. I don't, I don't think you guys get it. Uh, Dr. Gap, uh, Brian, Nikita, Two Wheel Monster, like I don't, the Wake and Blake, I don't think you guys really understand. And then there's another 
Uh, you got S1000 Will, you got um, Deontay. So then we have a whole crew of Atlanta guys we ride with. And I don't really think you guys understand what it takes to be fast. Like, so a lot of people on the internet, they will see a race and they will be like, hey, it's a win or a loss. They care nothing about the variables that are in between. And actually those variables that are in between are super duper important. So I'm just gonna explain a little bit to you and then we'll kind of go from there. First up, hey, am I hating? <laughs> am I making excuses? What, what, what we, what we, am I talking facts? What we doing? First subject, always is a touchy subject, weight. Oh my goodness, jockey weight. We're not even getting into the bike weight right now. We're gonna dive into the bike weight a little bit, a little bit later. But right now we're talking about jockey weight. How important is jockey weight and how does that play and how does that affect a race? Man, there is, there is a certain point where you weigh so much more than the other rider that it literally affects the outcome of the race. Two of my good friends that I rock and roll with and you know, and it's we just have fun. So we're more on the fun, casual side of road racing. So we don't take it that seriously. But if you want to get technical, I have, and these are just my two friends I will use in particular. I have two friends, uh, Jack B. Quick, student of the game. That dude builds, it, it, his bikes are ridiculous. And then you got Reaper 1K. Um, these are my guys and I love riding and I love testing with these guys because I ain't got to worry about no drama. I ain't gotta worry about no excuses. I ain't gotta worry about no bull crap. We just, we just straight up get to it and we have a good time. A L is a L, a W is a W, it is what it is. Let's line up and do it again. Uh, technically, by the ranking of weight classes, I should not ever, there is no scenario in the world, technically, where I should be racing Jack B. Quick or Reaper 1K. Now, I'm not gonna disclose their weights, um, but I will tell you it's enough to make a difference. So it is impossible that we should be literally lining up together. Y'all know me, I'm an open book more with my stuff because it really don't bother me like that. Um, but you guys know I bounce between 200, 205 all day, every day when I'm fully suited. But I have lost some weight, so we're gonna see how 2024 goes a little bit. But because of that weight difference that we carry, we should never, technically, road racing goes, we should never be in a serious race with each other. It just should not be that way. Now me, again, like I said, we're on the lighter side, so we use different tactics to test and to tune, and we don't take it that serious. So if I'm losing by six bikes from Jack B. Quick, and I do something to my bike, and then, okay, now I'm four bikes behind, I'm like, okay, yes, I've made progress. And I'm excited because, yo, I've, I've made, literally, I've made progress against these guys, you know what I mean? So it makes me, you know, excited and hype, and that's another reason you guys always see me in a good mood, even if I lose, because I'm like, I know what my bike is, I know who I'm racing, I know the variables I'm up against. And even against that, I'm in the fight. And the, the fact that I'm in the fight, bro, that, that speaks volumes, volumes, because there are different setups and all of that stuff for bikes. And I mean, now I'm jumping into another segue, setups. There are different types of setups and all of this stuff for a bike. So you see, let's just go with some of the obvious, because you can literally stay on these subjects like forever. So we're just gonna go with the obvious. Swing arms, bikes, sport bikes with the stretch. They can literally, literally, they can gear so much more aggressive than stock wheel base. My bike is considered stock wheel base because I still have the factory stock swing arm that came on it from the factory. Now, you know the bikes with the stretch, you guys know what that look like. So my bike is stock wheel base. There's other bikes that have arms on them. We call it a stretch, whatever you wanna call it. The fact that my bike is hitting with a, a stretch bike that can be geared so much more aggressive. So take my bike, everything that's done to my bike, throw an arm on it. I can go so much more aggressive with my gearing because the arm will prevent the bike from wheeling it and you can just, you can just go. It won't 100% prevent it, but it will fire a little bit more and you can take off and go. So the fact that my bike, which is stock wheel base, is even in the fight and even like you see on the hit, I'm hitting right there with bikes that have stretch this is a really good setup and that's really impressive because I don't know if I can convey over video how much more aggressive you can go with your gearing when you have a stretch. But I'm telling you, when you have stock wheel base, it is like, man, it's like riding a bull, bro. <laughs> it's, time, it's trying to tame the beast. And even when you have the stretch, you're still trying to tame the beast. But you have one more thing in your, you know, in your 
in your bag of tricks that can help you get out so much harder and so much so much faster so stretches huge i'm personally at a huge disadvantage when i'm racing someone with the stretch because they can be stupid aggressive where i can just be like all right you got to manage this don't go too much at the start and eventually once you get rolling then you can get there stretch bikes they still have that same concept of what they have to do but they can get in that throttle so much sooner so much sooner so set up and the bikes with the arms plays a huge part and again the fact that i be right side by side me and reaper be side by side with bikes that got stretched we technically should not be there me and deontay we doing hits we raced the stretch boost the other day the fact that we was in the fight like from first gear and we were still there first second wait a minute we're still there we should not be in that fight and we're stock wheelbase so that's a combination of setup and riding skill like bro we that's super impressive for a stock wheelbase bike to launch out with a stretch bike now you have two scenarios on that you have either a stretch bike still needs some help with the setup and figuring some stuff out and then on the other hand well i know with my situation I have a really good setup on this bike. Me and Kayla May dove into this setup and the bat stock wheel base is solid. I don't really know of another full weight stock wheel base bike that hits as hard as mine. Like it hits hard, very hard. And we're still talking about setup, something else with setup other than the arm. A lot of times you'll see people, they'll do the rotor delete. I get a lot of questions about rotor delete. Why would you do that? Why do you do that? Well, not me, but it's because I post videos. Why would they do that? Why'd you do that to your bike? That's stupid. Why would you do that? So in the roll race community, when you delete, they'll do a rotor delete, which leaves them with one front rotor. You will delete just whatever your bike is. You'll delete one rotor off the left side, and then you'll delete your brake rotor on the rear. What that does, not only does that drop static weight, it's not that much static weight, but it's enough that you will notice, hey, it drops static weight. But the biggest benefit of that is rotational mass. When the wheel is spinning, that completely changes the game. And for you guys that's been following the channel and watching, me and Reaper went back ever since Reaper got his bike and then I got the Jixxer. We've literally been going back and forth, back and forth. Each time we out, we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And a turning, a pivotal turning point for him is when he went single rotor i couldn't touch him anymore i was like dude i ain't got nothing for you bro i got nothing for you and at that point i went to like okay reaper you beat me by seven bikes i made a change okay now it's five and a half so it's in the right way so rotor deletes are freaking huge and if you guys pay attention to most of the bikes i race most of them are single rotor now the fact that i am we call it full weight you know there's the exhaust on there which drops some weight but it's considered full weight when you still have all your you have all of your functioning OEM parts. It's considered, you know, full weight. This bike is still full weight and almost every person I go against have an arm, you know, they have single rotor and or they're lighter than me. And the fact that the bat is still in the fight, the fact that Deontay is still in the fight. Now, eventually, you know, we do get the business. Sometimes we actually end up getting a W. But a lot of times you see them bikes pulling off. They supposed to pull off. They lighter. They got the single rotor. And, and a good bit of them got a stretch. They That's what they supposed to do. But the fact that they have to try that hard means that we got a, we got a really, really, really good setup. So when you see me in these races and we going up to 180, 190, and we just like tuck this like, oh, but they edge me out. Bro. Bro. Come on. Am I talking facts? Am I making excuses? Am I hating? What am I doing? Setup is huge. Just like me and Fast Lane D. We'll go to the weight with me and Fast Lane D when he was on the, the V4R. This, this actually plays the weight and setup. He was on the V4R. I was on my bike. Now, my bike is set up. I am probably 40 to 50 pounds lighter. Let's just go with 50 pounds lighter. At the time, I was 205. And at the time, I think, I don't know how much fast lane D weighs. I believe he's like 140 or 150 pounds. He's literally like a football player. He's huge. So at the time, let's just call it 50 pounds because it's not that serious to me. I am 50 pounds lighter than him and I'm on a setup bike. I should have beat him. I should have destroyed him. That was what was supposed to happen. Is that a true apples to apples of what the bike and what the rider can do? No, it is not. That was two friends having fun 
at the moment. It is nothing more than that. So when you guys look at these races, pay attention to these variables and see, okay, now if this dude is full weight, okay, that dude looked like he big. Okay, this should race should kind of turn out ish like this. Now it's not always like a golden rule like a Bible, but you should see like, oh, this should turn ish out like this. But again, I'm not always the heavy person in the race. Like I said, with Fast Lane D, dude, I'm 50 pounds lighter than him. Uh, with Hitman, when he has the ZX10, which is stretch, has a single rotor, I'm 30 pounds lighter than him. Deontay, which is on the Ducati V4, I believe I'm like 15 to 20 pounds lighter than him. I'm not for sure 100% on his weight. But there's some weight differences that, again, play a part. Everything isn't in my advantage. Sometimes it's against my advantage. But, hey, it's a part of roll racing, bro. Let's just, let's have some fun. So, Again, setup is huge. So the fact that you have a stock wheelbase bike, full weight, that is running with a stretch bike, single rotor, and maybe a heavier, maybe a lighter rider, the fact that this stock wheel bike is stock wheelbase bike is in the race is freaking huge. Again, every person I've raced has either been single rotor, lightweight jockey, or they got the setup on their bike. And again, stock wheel based bike is doing very well because them people are having to fight. Down here down south, most of the people I race are lighter than me. I think I have a few people in my weight class like Ben on slot performance with the red BMW. Me and him are in the same weight class. He does have the advantage of being single rotor, but hey, it, it is what it is. Every setup ain't gonna be the same. Let's get out here, let's have fun, let's test. Again, it's one of those situations like, okay, this time I lost by, uh, excuse me, like this time I lost by half a bike. Okay, the next time we go out, I won by half a bike, so I did make progress. So like me and Ben tested, we did some testing when he had the winglets, and then he was like, yo, I wanna really test these winglets off. Winglets off made a huge difference. I was like, yo, that plays a part. Rotor delete made a huge difference. I think the last time we raced in 2023, he was beating me probably by like, uh, probably about two, maybe two, maybe three bikes, something like that. Like he was, he was just getting that on me. I was like, yo, I ain't got nothing for you. We weighed pretty much the same. And um, bikes pretty much have the same setup. We both stock wheel base. Uh, you just have single rotor. You took your wingless off, bro. I can't do nothing with you. Like you, you rolling. It is what it is. You know what I mean? So setup plays a huge part. Uh, I think uh, Artie to a monster. He's lighter than me. I, again, I don't disclose people weights, but he's lighter than me. <coughs> Excuse me. Wake and Blake. I think me and Wake and Blake actually are in the same class. But again, our bikes have two different setups. So it is what it is. But again, it's no hating. It's just like, yo. Let's get out here and run. Let's see what happens. All right, I got beat by 13 trains. Let's see if next time I make some modifications, I'll get beat by 10 instead of 13. And yo, that's, that's just how we rock it. So it's not always apple to apple. So when you're watching these races, pay attention to the other guy, kind of see what they look like and be like, okay, I can make a judgment call on how this race is going to go. Going to get off of that. Another thing, something I want to hit on, flaggers. So which is be the start of the race. The start of the race it's huge. So down here, down south, we have pretty much three methods that we use. It's we'll use the head knot, one, two, three, you go. We'll use, hey, we're going to go at this certain marker spot. We're going to go. And then the third one is we have a flagger. By far, the flagger is not foolproof, but it is, I want to call it like 80, 85% proof. Like it's, it's the best you can do you know, without being official, 100% official, because let's face it, we out on the street, this is not official stuff. So, flagger is the best you can do. You try to line up the best you can, and then whap, you flag, and you go. And then uh, when you have, hey, we're gonna go at this certain spot, a lot of people are eager, a lot of people are antsy. They, by the time they get to the certain spot, they're like, they freaking gone. It's like, yo, you done jumped the race. And if you have any advantage with the setup, or you're lighter, or anything like that, it's like, bro, it's gonna be really hard for me to catch you, and I seriously doubt I even catch you. So you kind of got that win, but on social media, it just looked like, oh, you got destroyed. It's like, no, that kind of, that wasn't the case. <laughs> that was not the case. But again, it's fun. So it's nothing is official. There's no prizes. There are no trophies out here. It is what it is. And a lot of times we have this race spot down here where we'll be like, all right, we're going after the bridge. After the bridge is literally different to everybody. After the bridge to some people, as soon as my front tire is about to get off the bridge, I go. Some people is like, as soon as my front tire is off the bridge, I go. Some people, as soon as my rear tire is off the bridge, I go. Then you have me. As soon as the bike is off the bridge and the bike settles, now we go. So everyone's after the bridge is different. And I think I, 
I'm gonna put up an example of that so you guys can see that everyone goes different and you'll be like, oh my God, you got destroyed. No, actually we didn't. It's just misunderstanding, miscommunication, someone jumped. You're not catching any of these bikes. Like these bikes are so fast. If you make one mistake, you're done. Just forget it. Just go and pull to the side of the road, wait for the next race. Like you're, you are done. So flaggers, the start of the race is very important to who will win the race. How it starts is very important to who will win the race. Tuning. Tuning is very big. Um, and this is definitely a touchy subject. And I'm just, hey, y'all let me know. Am I talking facts? Am I making excuses? Or am I hating? Y'all let y'all let me know. Uh, tuning is a huge is a huge factor in races. I can tell you right now, and I'm not even gonna cap. I'm not even gonna cap. Like for people that are honest, you stock motor sell say we got the same bike, right? Stock motor, you like this bike? Stock motor. You guys, and there's nothing wrong with it. You do what you can do. But I'm telling you right now. If you come out to the road race scene with an ECU flash that you mailed in, you are about to get drugged. You're about to get the business. You're about to get Marguerite. So, and this is again, this is nothing against anyone. I'm just calling out names so you have an idea of what I'm talking about, right? If you, just, you know what? I'm not gonna call the names because I don't want to fit nobody. Take your favorite, your most popular ECU flasher you can think of. Just the first person that comes to your name, ECU flash. First person that comes to your name. If you come out to a road race, I'm talking about with legit road racers. If you come out to the road race scene and y'all got the same weight rider, same skill, same setup. If you come out there with an ECU flash versus someone that has a specific dyno tune for those parts, you're getting drugged, bro. You're getting drugged. It actually, anyone with any halfway decent setup, if you come out there with an ECU flash, versus someone that has a specific dyno tune for your bike, just hang it up, just know you're gonna get drugged. If you're not 50, 60 pounds lighter than them, just know you're getting drugged. You're getting the business, okay? You're getting every piece of it. I mean, the entire word, like all of the business, every piece of it, business. You're getting every piece of it. Because a bench, to, not bench to, but a ECU, a melon flash cannot duplicate a specific tune for the bike and especially when you get street tuned i remember get and this is again i will use this guy as an example because this is no hate and he knows my heart and he knows we work together and i love him ejr performance my cousin zx10 we got a uh, melon flash the bike was stock did a little bit of work to it got the melon flash from ejr performance holy crap that bike was amazing i didn't think it could get any better i was like yo this is dope boy we running we doing the dang old thing that 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 running right Fast forward, like a few months later, we actually get the bike street tuned from Evan from EJR Performance. Night and day difference, night and day difference. It's not that the melon flash is bad. It ain't like Evan don't know what he doing because he knows, yo, you on the street, you gonna be in these certain parameters, right? But when we dove into it, it's like, it's not you're in these certain parameters. This is your parameter. This is exactly what the bike's like. It's not you're in this parameter of what the bike like. No, this is what the bike like. Completely different bike. Like when I tell you work started being put in, work started being put in. Completely night and day difference. The bike was great before. After the specific tune, it was absolutely extraordinary. Took it to a completely different level. So again, if you coming out here, anyone that knows anything about road racing that has a decent setup, if you come out there with an ECU flash versus someone that's specifically tuned for their mods and they bike, you're getting drugged. And that's same weight rider, same skill rider, exact same setup, making the exact same power. They can be twin and identical. Only difference is the ECU flash versus specific tune for their bike, you're getting drugged. You're absolutely getting destroyed. And again, that segues me into the back. I know a lot of people are like, man, how, how many times your bike on the dyno? Like, oh my God. Me and my shop like to test. I love the dyno. I think it is a very useful tool. I thank God for the position that he's put me in. And because I'm in this position, I get to test a lot of different parts. Your mongoose, you want to test this? Your mongoose, can you test this? I test everything. And we're not the type of shop. I'm not, this is what I love about Caleb Bay. They don't just throw a part on there and be like, all right, run it. See what happens. No, run it. Let's put the sniffer in there. Let's see what the bike is doing. Let's see what it likes. Let's see what it don't like. Now, every time we do a part or we change something and we tune or we change something and we throw it on the dyno, 
Sometimes they're, hey, we don't need to change anything. Everything is still running great. And then sometimes it's like, oh, we need to make a little tweak here. Ooh, you know what? This is good here, but down here it changed. Let's make a little tweak there. So this bike is tuned. Like it is tuned for every ounce, every screw that is on this bike. It is tuned by Kayler May. My tuner B, like this dude is extraordinary. I trust these people 100% with this bike because of how this bike performs and how it runs. I don't care what setup, what's done to your bike, whatever, whatever. This bike performs against any bike it goes against. It performs, it does what it's supposed to do. And we have a lot of times we will say like, yo, it did as good as what it's supposed to do for what it is. Like it's killing a full weight stock wheel based bike. Like this bike is doing it and this bike is specifically tuned. So if you have another Jixxer and you have an ECU flash and you trying to run me, bro, you gonna get the business. I'm just, you're, you. it's not gonna work, bro. When I tell you, just like with EJR Performance and my cousin ZX10 Anubis, they have my bike tuned to this is exactly what it likes. It's not a parameter of what Jixxers normally like. Jixxers normally like this. No, it's like, pink. this right here is what your bike like. This right here, this right here, and then this right here, and then this right here. Like it's specific. So bro, if you're trying to run me with an ECU flash, you're gonna get the business. You're gonna lose, you're gonna lose. It, it's just, it is what it is, right? And I'm calling that a fact. I'm not even letting y'all answer that one. That is a fact. If you do not have a good tuner, you're gonna get the business. You are gonna get drugged. No way an ECU flash is keeping up with a specific dyno tune for a certain bike. It's, it's just not gonna happen. So get yourselves a good tuner. Uh, I know a tuner, I know a guy. Kayla May, I'm telling you, if you're in the local area, hit Kayla May up. Even if you're not in the local area, ship your bike down here. Guarantee you will not be disappointed. They are actually, and I don't want to give away because I don't know if the customer wants to give away his numbers, but they're working on the bike and it, it blew my mind what they were able to get out this bike. It's stupid, absolutely stupid. Oh, I think we're done, guys. Hey, I think that's all I have for you guys. <laughs> that's actually all the points I wanted to hit. Uh, and I, again, I just want you guys to pay attention to these variables when races are going on and you'll be able to make a judgment call and see see what's going on. So on my bike specifically, it is set up extremely well. Shout out to Kayla Maid. It is set up well, it is tuned well. Shout out to Kayla Maid. And it is, it is running strong, right? It is running strong. I know a lot of times you guys see the bike, you be like, oh man, you lost this race. I was supposed to lose that race. That person I'm racing is so much lighter than me. That person I'm racing has single rotor. That person I'm racing, you know, um, has a stretch. Like I was supposed to lose that person. I'm racing got motor work. I was supposed to lose. So, and it's, it's, it's awesome. Cause I've had a couple of times where I've raced a few subscribers and they was like, dang, watching these videos, like you'll get out here and think Mungus is not slow, but you'll think he just like, eh, whatever. And then you get out here and run him. It's like, holy crap. I'm like, dang, this dude is moving. So dude, pay attention to these variables. But if you are in my weight class, in my setup class, dude, you're not beating me. I, I, I ain't going to say you're not going to beat me. You're going to have a very tough time beating me. Like, extremely tough. If you're in my weight class, if you're in my setup class, you're going to have a very difficult time beating me. Stock wheelbase. You're going to have a very, very difficult time beating me. Even with the arm, it will be a little difficult. Now, again, there's some people that get their bikes down to 300. Like, I think EJR, the lightest bike he have on his scale is like 301 pounds, 302 pounds. This this is nowhere near that. I'm probably I don't even know what I am. I need to get the bike weight. I'm probably gosh, man, I don't even know. I would I I, I think I'm sub 400 pounds. I I'm I'm don't quote me on this because I don't know. I'm gonna say like three a between 380 and 390 is what I'm gonna say. I I could be totally wrong. I have no idea where this is because I haven't had it weighed. So I need to get it weighed, but. Being close to 300 pounds, I'm not that way. I'm not nowhere near that. And there's people, and I, again, I don't tell people's business because it's not for me to tell. And then I, you never can be like, Mungus said that. No, Mungus didn't. I keep all that stuff to myself. So there's people, they bikes are 50, 60 pounds lighter than my bike. And we race it. It is what it is, bro. I don't, I don't care. Again, you beat me by 13 trains. Let's see if I can make it 10 trains this time. It does not bother me. But anyway, that's what I have for you guys. Again, this is no hate on anyone this is no disrespect to anyone we are just talking the facts and i wanted to make especially make sure i made this episode before we got into the refresh 
of the bike and the performance. Y'all been seeing me throw little clips and little hints of it, of it and all that stuff up. We did the episode where I told you, hey, we was having issues, but we got our 10 horsepower back. This bike is at 100% and I am excited to show you guys what 100% looks like. And I think you guys are gonna be blown away because I was blown away. And ooh, dude, 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 dude. All right, we got this episode out. So now moving forward, we can go on and get into the next episode. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys. I appreciate y'all rocking with your boy. You know who it is. It's your boy. Do my Thank you for watching, dudes. Thank you for watching, dudes. No market. All right, do to do this. I've held you guys long enough. It is time to get up out of here. But right before we do, the giveaway winners for the Domino grips that we got courtesy of Factory Superbike for hitting the hundred K. And we about to do. We about to hit three hundred thousand, dude. Oh my God, this is freaking exciting. But we're gonna get something else going very soon. But I definitely want to start the new year off giving something away so uh we have the domino black and red grips we have the domino green and black grips we have the domino blue and white grips and we have the domino black and gray grips and dude man they they look good i can't even lie i wanted to dag them order some because but we actually did not and i love my giveaways bro i freaking love them because not everyone always watches to the end and for you guys that did that watch to the end we have some entries we have 10 entries bro i think last time we had like 28 or 26 or something like that we had 10. it's not maybe maybe grips aren't that exciting but dude it's free daggum grips so we're gonna get these sent out but uh what we're gonna use hopefully this shows up we have a random number generator on my phone uh, i haven't hit enter yet because i know it's gonna do whatever it does we're gonna hit the random number generator we're just gonna hit enter and whoever wins that one wins uh will be the first one that hits so we're gonna hit the first random number generator and up oh, before we do that let me just show you i got everybody i got everybody listed here in my phone and that's one to ten we're just gonna start from the top and work our way down so without further ado let's jump into this so we can get you guys on your way so random number generator we're gonna hit enter bam the first number is eight which is actually my favorite number so Number eight on the list will be ProDig Pro Dig 1K. So I will be contacting you again. I will contact you. You will know it's me. It's not going to be no spam because I just don't talk like everybody else. You will know it's me. I will contact you and you will get the set of grips. I guess um, I don't really don't know which, which ones to give you. I guess the green grips are up first. So. The green and black grips. You got the green and black grips. I guess the next up will be the red and black. All right, so we're gonna go back to random number generator. I'm gonna hit the button. Number 10. Number 10 is what came up. Number 10, and that will be for, let's see who's it. Oh my God, Q Star. Q Star, you are the winner of these red and black domino grips, my boy. I will be contacting you again. You will know it's me because I don't talk like anybody else. Don't get fooled by the spam. So we'll take him out. All right, next up, gonna be the blue and white domino grips. Let's see who we got here. Again, we're gonna pop the num random number generator again. It falls on number six. Number six, let's see who's six on here. Number six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Dirty South 20. I really hope that's showing up on the camera. Dirty South 20. You get the black and white domino grips. And yeah, if y'all paid attention, last time it was just three grips. We added in the extra grip because, dude, why not? Yeah, I ordered a grip and I ordered the one I ordered. I didn't like it with the bike. So I'm like, yo, we're going to throw it in. I was going to send it back, but I was like, let's just go ahead and give it back. So this is going to be for the black and gray grips. So Dirty South, you are out. And then hit the random number generator again. It came up number seven. So let's see who that is. Number seven. Oh, Apollo. There we go. Apollo, you have the gray and black domino grips. Again, I will be contacting you guys to let you know uh, 
You won your prize and so I can get them shipped out immediately. Anyway, man, again, I don't want to hold you guys too long. I appreciate y'all rocking with your boy. You know who it is. It's your boy. No,